Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me in Prince's Park in Toxtafin, Liverpool. A few Saturdays back, Mrs Bimble went out and she took my executive producer Molly Gallimore with her and left me in the house on my own. It's not a common occurrence. Usually when they go out, I go out and film these videos for you lot. So I thought, should I watch Breaking Bad right from the beginning? Or should I watch Peaky Blinders? I decided to watch Peaky Blinders because it's on iPlayer and it's free. Whilst I was watching it, I thought there's some nice filming locations on this. We shall have to go down to Birmingham and do a bimble. But when I googled them, they're all filmed in the northwest, the bimble region, and the lion's share of the scenes are filmed here in Liverpool. So it meant only one thing. I would have to make sure my flat cap was locked and loaded. And we should have to do a peaky bimble by order of the peaky bimbler. Let's indeed bimble. Believe it or not, this quiet residential street here in Toxteff is where the Shelbys lived. It's where they had the betting shop. It's where Alfie Solomons got out of his car and said it was a toll. And he told his prize fighter to pick wherever he liked, knock yourself out. It's called Powys Street and it's an area of Toxteff called the Welsh Streets because they've all got Welsh names. Welsh companies came to Liverpool and hired Welsh workers and they built them some houses with Welsh street names. Apparently, a fella named Richard Starkey was born in Madryn Street round here. Can't think what he was famous for. But his name Ringo's a bell. Get it, Ringo's. Back in 2013 when they started filming Peaky Blinders, all these houses on the Welsh streets were all boarded up. If you look on Google Street View, you can see what the BBC did to him. They painted them brown so they look dirty with soot. Quite nice now though. They've redeveloped it, made some lovely houses. Might have a look how much the rent is. In Peaky Blinders, Powys Street is supposed to be Watery Lane in Small Heath in Birmingham. And I can't help but think that they chose Powys Street over the other Welsh streets due to its name. Powys is a part of Wales that became the Midlands, you know, Birmingham and that. And Powys in Old Welsh spelt with an E, means country dwellers. And the Shelbys were all gypsies, weren't they? With the caravans. They liked a bit of countryside. Avid viewers of Peaky Blinders may notice some differences. There's no factory at the end of the street. That was some staging. And there's no giant warehouse and iron viaducts hanging over it. They were all added in post-production. But that giant warehouse is in Liverpool. Let's bimble. Frequent viewers of Bimbalism will have heard me go on about Victorian Liverpool's freshwater plight. It's too close to the sea, so the River Mersey is brackish, meaning it's full of salt, so you can't drink it. And there's no mountain streams or lakes, so you have to bring your fresh water in from somewhere else. To the side of me is High Park Reservoir, aka Topstuff Reservoir. It would have stored water, it's not a lake. It's a big stone tank. It was built in 1853 and it would have provided the people of Toxteth with fresh drinking water up until 1997. The water would have come from Rivington Pike over near Chorley and from a spring here in Liverpool known as Windsor Well over by Lodge Lane. 
they had to mix the two waters together because the water coming from Rivington Pike was discoloured by the pipework. That meant that the people of Toxteth didn't really want to drink it. So they had to mix it with some local water to make it look a bit more palatable. In later years, High Park Reservoir would have been filled up by Lake Vermwy in Wales, which we've gone on about a lot here on Bimbalism. You could hold 1.7 million gallons of water here in High Park Reservoir, and the walls are eight feet thick. They stopped using it in 1997, and due to its age, it's perfect for filming period dramas, like Peaky Blinders. I think they filmed Alfie Solomon's Breadworks here, the aerated bread company of Camden. Only they didn't make bread, did they? They made rum. Oh wait, just broke rule number one. The distinction between bread and rum is not to be discussed. Alfie Solomons might come and beat me over the head with a copper pipe. This is a rather odd occurrence, Bimblers. Usually I do these pieces to camera sat outside of a church, rather than sat inside one. This is the Anglican Cathedral here in Liverpool. And in Peaky Blinders land, this is where Thomas Shelby meets Jack Nelson, the American gangster from Boston. And they walk up and down the aisles, discussing matters. Jack Nelson refers to this as a Catholic church, but it's not. It's the Anglican Cathedral, the Protestant one. The Catholic Cathedral is much too modern looking for Peaky Blinders finished off in 1967. Although, the Anglican Cathedral was only completed in 1978, but they started building it in 1904. Sir Giles Gilbert Scott designed the Anglican Cathedral. He's the grandson of Sir George Gilbert Scott, the Beatles of Victorian architecture. But Sir Giles was no slouch himself. He designed the K2, K3 and K6 phone boxes, you know, the red ones and he designed Battersea Power Station and Waterloo Bridge in London and the Fourth Road Bridge in Scotland. He was only 24 years old when he took on the Anglican Cathedral and it was his first solo project. There were serious misgivings about giving him the job. So they actually hired him a mentor, George Frederick Bodley. He was a friend of his grandfather, Sir George Gilbert Scott. And he was took on to make sure that Sir Giles didn't make any silly mistakes like a young man would but I think he did alright I mean it took 70 odd years to build 1904 to 1978 and Sir Giles had been dead for 12 years when they finished it off but apart from that the tower is about 100 metres tall you can actually buy tickets to go up there I think it warrants a bimble of its own this Anglican Cathedral lag Anyway, when I was locking my bike up outside, I noticed another Peaky Blinders filming location. One that I'd been looking for, for quite some time. You know, wandering around on Google Street View. But my prayers were answered. Number 86 Rodney Street. Ada Shelby's house Tommy Shelby comes and visits her and a fella opens the door who looks a lot like Prince Charles from The Crown you've no idea how long I spent looking for that door and it's just over the road from the cathedral let's bimble and so bimblers we reach Faulkner Square named after Edward Faulkner a soldier and a former High Sheriff of Lancashire. The square was built between 1830 and 1835, but Edward Faulkner didn't want it named after him. He actually wanted it to be named Wellington Square, and I can see why. It became known as Faulkner's Folly. It wasn't very popular to start off with. That could have something to do with it being up a big hill, and it being very difficult to get your horse and carriage up here. It's difficult enough to get a bimbler up here. It was also built on top of some marshland known as Moss Lake Fields and people thought the houses would sink into the mud. In response, Edward Faulkner had the land drained and a stream moved. And up until now, 
none of the houses have sunk into the mud fingers crossed in Peaky Blinders land this is supposed to be Belgravia in central London and it's a dead ringer this area of Liverpool is called the Georgian Quarter because of all the terrace houses in series 2 Thomas Shelby pulls up here and scopes it out before he goes off to his sister Ada's house which we've just found later on in that episode John Shelby drops a grenade through the letterbox of that house it's supposed to be the home of Field Marshal Henry Russell and Thomas Shelby has been assigned to assassinate Henry Russell on the orders of Winston Churchill you've got to love Peaky Blinders it's all fantastical I love it they don't actually assassinate him with that grenade though that happens at Epsom Derby the horse race but speaking of letterboxes there's a post box round there an Edward VIII one very rare explosive action If you're planning your own Peaky Bimble, this would be a good place to start. St George's Hall, just opposite from Lime Street Station. Very handy for the trains. We could have started our Bimble here, but it wouldn't have suited the narrative and the overall story arc of the Bimble. St George's Hall is rather impressive with its neoclassical stone pillars and it was built to be multifunctional. There was a law courts inside and a great big concert venue. In Peaky Blinders land, Oswald Mosley has one of his fascist rallies here at St George's Hall. Only it's supposed to be Birmingham, isn't it? More on Oswald Mosley in the next episode, when we go to Manchester. Spoiler alert. The big pillars feature a few times in Peaky Blinders, in many different contexts, according to my big book of Bimble. In series one, Major Chester Campbell, played by Sam Neill. That's Dr Grant from Jurassic Park to me. He meets Grace Burgess on the steps so that they can talk about Tommy Shelby. In series three, Grace Burgess is now Grace Shelby. She married Tommy. And she was accidentally killed here by the Changretti family. The hall was all finished off in 1854 and it was all designed by a Harvey Lonsdale Elms. He died in 1847, seven years before they finished off St George's Hall. He died of consumption, tuberculosis, and in Peaky Blinders land, Tommy Shelby's daughter, Ruby, she dies of tuberculosis, age six. Anyway, enough of these bit parts, to the garrison. Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A mistake that made the distance Or a trying way to live Maybe it's the time that you grabbed at my arms And electricity flowed from my shoulders to palms In a white hot glow leaving white cold scars Left fair and on show just to prove they were ours Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A novelty improvement Left lonely as it gave Maybe it's the time that you close both your eyes And you 
You pouted your lips as you waited for mine In the soft red glow of your soft cold arms Serotonin burns holes through my veins to my heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it's the time that I wanted to say That my limbs won't move more than two feet away From your day glow side luminescent sparks I could burst into flames from one beat from your heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is And I quite like how it is Currently stood by the Stanley flight, which comes off the Leeds Liverpool Canal and into Stanley Dock. And this big warehouse behind me is the one that they superimpose onto Powys Street or Watery Lane in Peaky Blinders. It's called the Tobacco Warehouse, and as the name suggests, it's where they brought all the tobacco into Liverpool over from America to be stored and cured in there and then to be sold off. It must have been big business because that warehouse is the largest brick built building in the whole world. After they built that, it was all concrete and steel. It's 14 stories and 38 meters high, and it stands to the side of Stanley Dock. Well, actually, it stands on top of Stanley Dock. They filled in half of the dock to build the giant warehouse, and the old warehouse stands to the rear, and the street in the middle is where the garrison pub was. I regret to inform you, that the garrison pub isn't real. It's a bit of staging. You might notice that in series six when the garrison pub leaves Liverpool or Small Heath in Birmingham and finds its way into Deansgate in Manchester under the railway viaducts. More on that in episode two. It's actually a little bit of symbolism or subtext. You might notice that the garrison pub juts out into the street and the street was built around it and in series 6, they had to build a railway viaduct around it. That shows you how powerful the Shelbys were. If you were going to build a rose, you had to build it round their pub, because they weren't going to move it. On the other side of Stanley Dock, you'll find the Titanic Hotel, and they did some filming there as well. Underneath the archways by the quayside is where communist shop steward Freddie Thorne pointed a gun at Tommy Shelby. Stanley Dock and the Tobacco Warehouse feature heavily in series 1 to 5. If you re-watch it, look out for the cast iron footbridges which link the two warehouses. You can see them clearly. But now, Bimblers, we're off to Margate. Well, not Margate. Somewhere a bit closer. That's Bimble.
Well, Peaky Bimblers, that's it for this episode. We've reached Formby Beach, or Margate as it is in Peaky Blinderland. This is where they film the end of Series 4, where Tommy Shelby and Alfie Solomons have their showdown. Both men shoot each other, and Tommy Shelby walks away from it, leaving Alfie Solomons lifeless in the sand. Spoiler alert, he's not really dead. He comes back in Series 5, and Series 6. Can't get rid of him. Just like we'll be returning in Episode 2, we'll be back in Liverpool, taking the ferry across the Mersey to Aunt Polly's house, and then we'll head east to Tommy Shelby's house, and then into Manchester to learn all about Oswald Mosley. But to do that, I'm going to need some spondulics. So if you could buy a Peaky Bimbler t-shirt, and maybe donate on Kofi, that'll buy me some train tickets, won't it? If you can help, brilliant. But if you just rather enjoy, go at it. Anyway, that's it. In the bleak midwinter. I'm not really dead. Yeah.